stare. You're watching ESPN Classic. James, thank you. Welcome to Innsbruck on quarterfinal Thursday at the World Hockey Championship. The Slovaks in white. Canada is the home team in red. The referee is Thomas Anderson from Sweden, the linesman from Sweden and from Finland. And it's power on power to start. Joe Thornton, Simone Gagne, and Rick Nash for Canada. Stumpel, Shatan, and Palfi for Slovakia. And yes, the Dano Chara is on the ice to face off against Thornton and now hops off. Here's Thornton playing it ahead for Simone Gagne, streaking in as Gagne is shot off the shoulder of Slovakian starter Jan Lasik. And a quick pace to this opening moment as Rick Nash comes up with it, looking for Joe Thornton. That pass too far for him. Zygmunt Palfi playing it ahead for Miroslav Shatan. Slovakia boasts six 30 goal scorers from the NHL. Thornton playing it in. And now Canada will make a quick change. Coach Mark Habscheid emphasizing short shifts in this matchup with the Slovaks. And now here's a quick lead pass, breaking in is Gavrik. Gavrik in, scores! Marion Gavrik, 45 seconds in. It's 1-0 Slovakia. You want quick strike offense? Here it is. And this is what Canada knew they had to defend against. That's why the defensive matchup was so critical for Team Canada going in. Marion Gavrik goes down his knees as Ed Jovanovski strikes to thwart his prospects to get into the net, but he can't do that. You see it's just break wide open. Here comes Gabrick, makes a little move on Brodeur, goes to the backhand, and Marin Gabrick finishes the playoff. That's Gabrick's third goal of the tournament, and this has been the biggest thing for Canada in this tournament, their inability to defend against speed in the neutral zone and exposing their defense, in particular, Regeer and Jovanovski, who have not had a good tournament. 45 seconds into the game, 23-year-old Marion Gavrik strikes. Gavrik's already a two-time 30-goal scorer in the National Hockey League, and this year in the Slovakian League scored 25 goals in 29 games. Scored the stretch pass and the utilization of the stretch pass by the Slovakians is better than anybody else in this tournament. And the checking line gets on the ice for the first time, already down 1-0. This is Chris Draper behind the goal, along with Shane Doan. Draper still working down low. In for Robin Regeer. Regeer and Jovanovski remain on the ice for Canada. Now Dona centering pass goes off a leg. Draper looking for it. Caps it there for Kirk Maltby. Here's Maltby back for Draper. A shot that goes wide. Jovanovski at the line. And play is called. We're going to have a slashing call against Canada as Maltby and Chara come together. And Maltby will go off. So Canada down a goal will be down a man. A minute and 15 seconds into this game. And down a man who's on their number one penalty killing unit along with Chris Draper. Kirk Maltby's a very important player for Canada, especially in checking and shorthand situations. Canada can't get frazzled early on here, Gord. They've got to stick to their game plan. Their line change has to be better. Their ability to defend against the speed game of the Slovakians has to be better. And they've got to communicate a whole lot better. This is a critical penalty kill early on in the game. Fisher wins the faceoff. Fisher and Morrow start the penalty kill up front. They're back on the end line. It'll be Scott Hannon and Chris Phillips. Slovakia has more power play goals than any team in the tournament. They're 10 for 37. Joseph Stumpel spinning back, trying to play it across for Palfi. Zygmunt Palfi waits, walks, sends it in. Stir back a shot. That goes high and wide. Bouncing puck, Brodeur down. And the puck squirted away from him. Stumpel trying to center it back in front. Brodeur gets a pad down on Miroslav Shatan, and now Brodeur freezes the loose puck. Sturbeck and Vishnovsky are tied for the tournament lead in scoring by defenseman. Miroslav Shatan does a good job. This is where he's so good. If you talk to Lindy Ruff, his coach in Buffalo, I'll tell you he's a magical guy around the goal. He can stick hell in a phone booth, and Ziggy Pelf, he knows how to finish plays off. Scott Hannon and Chris Phillips try to be aggressive down low, but Hannon just can't corral the puck and force a Brodeur to have an active stick. Shatan was the MVP in this tournament in 2002 when the Slovaks won the gold medal. And off the faceoff, Simone Gagne brings it ahead for Canada. Gagne in with Draper. Behind the goal, Lasik. Lasik was the first Slovakian to play goal in the NHL. And a long lead feed. And sneaking in behind the Canadian defense was Zygmunt Palfi. That Canada, pass was broken up. Court, if Canada's not ready to prepare and play against that stretch pass, they're 
dead this afternoon. Absolutely dead. Stumple on the power play. With Chatan, go back to the line. That shot deflected wide off the stick of Martin Sturback. Chatan in behind the goal. Centering pass bounced off the stick of Joseph Stumple. And now Draper comes up with it and fires it down the ice. Six meetings between Canada and Slovakia at the World Championship. Two ties and four one-goal games. Three of them won by Canada. Slovakia's lone win in 2002 in the quarterfinal when the Slovaks went on to win the gold medal. Circling back is Marion Gabrick. Lost the puck and just got away from Shane Doan. Now Pavel Dimitra goes rink wide. Marion Hosa drops it off for Zdeno Chara. Back for Hosa. The Ottawa teammates connecting there. And Chris Phillips, a third Ottawa senator, comes up with a loose puck. Final seconds of the Slovakian power play. Here's Zdeno Chara. Back to the line, Lubomir Viznowski for Pavel Dimitra with a shot off the arm of Artem Brodeur. Not an easy save. Dimitra's a good shooter, and they had the big screen in front, and Chara. Maltby out of the box. The pass was too far for him. We're back to the World Hockey Championship in Innsbruck right after this. Canadian coach Mark Habscheid, his team down one to nothing in this quarterfinal match. Czechs in the U.S. playing in Vienna at this hour. Tonight, here in Innsbruck, Sweden against Switzerland. In Vienna, Russia against Finland. The winner of this game will get the winner of Russia and Finland in the semifinal in Vienna on Saturday. And off the faceoff, Brendan Morrison battling for the loose puck. Wade Redden goes back to pick it up. Redden ahead for Morrison. Playing it ahead for Ryan Smith. Here's Smith across the line with Danny Heatley. Stana, or Lashik rather, goes back to play it along the boards. Brendan Morrison battling for it. And now Morrison loses the puck, but it's picked up by Canadian captain Ryan Smith. In for Morrison, a shot off a leg. Redden pitches up. Wade Redden, a backhand shot. Stopped there by Lashik. And the puck's still loose, and finally the Slovak netminder falls on it. All this because of the extra effort of Ryan Smith and the good puck possession skills of Brendan Morrison. It's a smart read by Wade Redden, and he sees he's got a little seam to get to the net. Lashik's forced to make a save. But that's the chances Canada will have exposing the Slovakian defense. And you heard Glenn and Brian talking about it outside of Chara and maybe a little bit from Vishnovsky. This is not a great core on the back end for Slovakia. Canada's got to be very aggressive offensively. Jan Lasek led part of Bitsa to the Czech Elite League title this year. And was not named the playoff MVP. That went to Alex Hemsky, but the belief was that Czechs would never pick a Slovak as their playoff MVP. <laughs> Now brought down is Brendan Morrison, a penalty coming up to Slovakia. Lubos Barteczko is going to go off, and Canada will get its first power play chance as Barteczko is called for charging. Little things matter, Gord. Canada getting strong on the wall right now, starting to feel their way through the first part of this game. Strong on the wall, that leads to Brendan Morrison getting the puck in open ice, and then Barteczko comes over and just cross-checks him to the ice. In terms of percentages, Canada has the number one power play in the competition, clicking along at about 30%. But four for four against Slovenia to open the tournament. Canada is four for 22 since then. But Slovakia has not been great on the penalty kill, giving up six power play goals against so far in the tournament. That's not very good in this tournament. Jovanovski out there along with Dan Boyle, Nash, Thornton, and Gagne up front. Zdeno Chara comes up with it, fires that into his bench, and play is called. We're going to face off down in the Slovak zone. Well, Danny Boyle's a guy that on the offense anyways, especially in the power play, is going to have to make some things happen. Joseph Stumple's a solid face-off man for Slovakia, but Boyle is just such a slick distributor of the puck. He makes good reads. He's not afraid to jump into the cycle, and he can get the puck on goal guard. When you look at Danny Boyle, 10 shots so far in this tournament, and two of them off the pole, so he's been a lethal weapon for Canada on the back end. Stumple versus Thornton on the face-off. Former teammates in Boston. Now Boyle comes up with it. Rolling puck for Boyle. Played down for Joe Thornton. Here's Nash trying to center it, gets it back. Rick Nash tapping it back for Thornton. Stumple intercepts and comes away for Slovakia. Canada's going to have to be prepared for Chara, who plays on the right side, as Glenn said, coming across on Rick Nash. That's going to be a tough play for Rick Nash. They may want to bring Thornton into the seam there, let Nash give it back to Thornton and drive to the net. Chara steps up on Jovanovski. Zednik battling for the loose puck. Stir back to the line and chipped out by Michael Hanzus. Hanzus, a top defensive player in the National Hockey League. And an Iron Man as well, since joining the Philadelphia Flyers, has not missed a regular season or playoff game for the Flyers. Anybody that plays almost 19 minutes a game for Ken Hitchcock at the forward position, very reliable player. Boyle battling for the loose puck with Hanzus, and he'll send that down the ice. Hanzus was a plus 18 the last time he played in the NHL, too. That's a real good number for a guy like Michael Hanzus. Jovanovski brings it ahead. Heatley Smith 
Out there along with Patrick Marlowe up front. And now Heatley goes digging for the puck. The MVP of this tournament one year ago. Redden banking it there for Ryan Smith. Smith walking out trying to center it. A bouncing puck still loose in front. Redden gets to it. 30 seconds to go on the Canadian power play. Wade Redden plays it down for Ryan Smith. Back to the line. Brendan Morrison. It hops over his stick and goes down the ice. And now Brodeur, long lead pass for Smith as the Slovaks are changing. Smith drops it back for Redden to drive. That goes wide. Brendan Morrison steps up. Playing it there for Danny Heatley. Heatley with a drive. Scores! Danny Heatley ties it on the power play. Heatley scores, but Ryan Smith won't get an assist, and he deserves one. He's right in front of Lashik. Lashik never sees this puck to the last second, but this is what Canada needs from Danny Heatley. They need him starting to penetrate the box and putting pucks on goal. Ryan Smith, we know he's going to battle on the boards. We know he's going to battle in front of the goal, and Ryan Smith starts it off. Nice back diagonal to Wade Redden. Watch where Ryan Smith goes, Gord. He goes right to the front of the goal. Morrison on his backhand. Healy. Now Smith's involved and engaged. That Lashik never sees a puck because Smith's battling with Chara. That's just a great job by Ryan Smith. Danny Healy, do this all afternoon. Get pucks on goal. The goalie will never see it, and Canada will win. And we'll see if that puck was deflected in front. Went off the post and in. But Lashik never saw it till it was too late. Again, look at Big Chara and Smith. You got to have serious guts to go battle with Zidane O'Chara like Ryan Smith did, and he did a real good job right there. Danny Heatley with his 18th career goal at the World Hockey Championship moves into second place by himself ahead of Steve Iserman. Now three goals behind Marcel Dion for the modern day Canadian lead. It's shocking that Slovakia has given up seven power play goals. It's unbelievable in this tournament when you consider they have Chara on defense and Stumpel who's a good face off man. Sturback for Lubomir Viznoski at the line. Wade Redden a slow roller down to Lashuk and he'll hang on to that. Okay now Mark Habside's a little bit out of his rotation right now because of the power play and this is really not the matchup he wants. Shatan Stumpel and Palfi are on the ice for Slovakia. He wants to save those three guys. I'm talking about Malti, Draper, and Doan, who runs the speed of Holsa and the speed of Gabrick. So right now, it's a little bit the slowpoke style for Slovakia, puck possession style against the speedsters from Canada. Draper versus Stumpel on this faceoff. And Draper takes a whack at that, taps it back to the line. Here's Shane Doan with a shot. That got blocked in front. Malpe leaves it there for Draper to drive. Stopped by Lashik. The speed and tangible for Canada will be huge on this sequence score. They should really take advantage of it. Doan loves that puck down. Shane Doan trying to walk in. Dropping it off for Malpe. Now Doan gets it back behind the goal. Shane Doan bumped by Chara. And Chara lifts that puck away from Dome, plays it there for Miroslav Shatan, who lifts it up to center ice. He just bailed out on that. He heard footsteps. He completely bailed out on that. That's just a soft play. Rene Vitoreni sends it ahead. In comes Miroslav Shatan, tied up there by Patrick Marlowe. See the utilization of the stretch pass of Vitorini right to Shatan. They do it all the time. Shane Doan sends it right down to Lash. He'll be watched by Marlowe, and he'll have to hang on for a faceoff. Slovakia, Pierre has 12 players back from that team that won the 2002 World Championship. And there's Francis Hosa, their head coach, the father of Marion and Marcel, who are both on this team. That world, champion for Slo world Championship for Slovakia was a major statement. It came months after the Salt Lake City Olympics when the Slovaks didn't have their best players for the opening round. Peter Stasi, their GM, was very bitter about the treatment at Salt Lake City. But the World Championship more than made up for that. I don't think he was really happy, though, the people in L.A. with what happened with Ziggy Palfi in that tournament as well. Radoslav Suchi. Playing it ahead for Pavel Dimitra. Here comes Dimitra across the line, working on Thornton. Dimitra plays it off the arm of Simone Gagne. Bouncing puck in front, and Thornton will play that out. Radoslav Suchi, five-year veteran of the Phoenix Coyotes. Here's Hosa. Had a stick lifted by Joe Thornton. And now Suchi being watched by Thornton. Scott Walker knocks it down. Canada changing. Here's Gagne looking for it. Dimitra got it by him. Scott Hannon steps up, but the puck squirts by him. Looks like Canada wants to get Hannon and Phillips on the ice against Holson and Gabrick as much as they can. Changed on the fly there. They took Jovanovski and Regeer off. That pass from Phillips handcuffed Hannon, who now gets it ahead to Scott Walker. Walker, Marlowe, and Brendan Morrow up there for Canada. Here's Scott Walker in behind the goal. Centering pass. And that's broken up by Lubos Bartechko. Hanzus sending it deep. Phillips gets down and takes that away from Richard Zednik. And now Morrow goes back and picks it up for Scott Hannon. Eight minutes gone here in the first period. 1-1 the score. Hannon through the middle of the ice. It rolls right down to Lashik. 
And he'll bank that ahead for Barteczko. Hanzus is in behind the Canadian defense. Here comes Hanzus in a long score. Second breakaway goal for Slovakia in this first period. If you're not prepared to defend the stretch pass against these guys, you're going to get whooped. And it's the second time, as Gord said, Canada's not prepared to defend against a stretch pass. First, they get exposed by Gabrick in early on in this period. And right here, they get exposed by Hansers. You see all the Canadian players jump up on the passer. Makes an indirect pass to Michael Hansers. Berdur commits too soon. He's going to be aggressive, but he goes down. Hansers too good a scorer. Look at Brendan Morrill. He's a forward. Hannon and Phillips make the misread in the neutral zone. There's nobody there. Again, I'll stress it. No stretch pass defense. You will get crushed by this team. And Cannon looks ill-prepared right now to defend against a stretch pass. Hanzus with his third of this World Hockey Championship. The 28-year-old has given Slovakia the lead for the second time in this opening period. And it all started with Jan Lasik making the right read, moving the puck up to the center race line, an indirect pass off the boards, and look where Hanzus was, all in behind the Canadian defense all by himself. Redden plays it ahead for Brendan Morris, and here's Ryan Smith with the shot. Lasik makes the save on that. Now Lasik had to play it away from Heatley. At the side of the goal, the puck is on the net, and finally, play is called. TSN's coverage of the World Hockey Championship returns after this. Eyes of the world will be on Halifax and Quebec City this May for the 2008 IIHF World Hockey Championship. Be a part of history as Canada hosts the IIHF World Hockey Championship for the first time ever. The top 16 hockey nations on the planet will be going head-to-head -head from May 2nd to May 18th. Don't miss a second of this world-class hockey event. Get your tickets now for Halifax and Quebec City. The world is waiting. Championship weekend here on ESPN Classic. Great chance for Danny Heatley a moment ago, and the rebound bounced right to Ryan Smith. Meanwhile, Marion Hosa has been sent off, <laughs> and we think he's going to do Marion Gabrick's time for him. He is. Marion Gabrick with a slash in the neutral zone, and they called Hosa for elbowing. Uh, I don't think so. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Canada deserves a power play in this instance. Canada to the power play. Marlowe along with Heatley and Smith. And Marlowe wins the draw back. Brendan Morris in a shot. That goes wide. Patrick Marlowe comes into this game as the number one faceoff man in the tournament. Winning better than 70% of his draws. Morrison manning the point along with Wade Redden on the Canadian power play. And Morrison shovels it in, but Chara gets back to it first. A bouncing puck over his stick. Heatley leaving it there for Marlowe. Trying to tap it back for Wade Redden. Hanzus is all over him. Now Redden steps up. And the puck gets by him at the line, and Zednik arguing with referee Thomas Anderson that Canada should have been penalized. Here's Marlowe playing it in. Danny Heatley after it. Heatley in behind the goal for Marlowe. Patrick Marlowe setting it up. Marlowe down low for Smith. Back in front for Marlowe. Centering pass. That was turned away. Now Marlowe centers to Ryan Smith. Scores! Ryan Smith, the Canadian captain, ties it at two. For the Slovaks, it's unbelievable they're not better on the penalty kill, especially with Chara and Hanzus, but this is tic-tac-toe by Canada. Gore's absolutely right. Thing of beauty on the goal. Good puck movement. Ryan Smith is here, and he's ready to engage in battle for Team Canada this afternoon. Good puck move. Watch a little nifty play right here. Marlowe tries to put it out to Healy. Healy over to Marlowe, then back door to Ryan Smith, who has a gimmick into the empty net by Lashik. But it's awesome distribution, and Ryan Smith in his favorite spot, Gord. He's not going to miss that being a left-hand shot on the right side. But it's good distribution. Heat lead to Marlowe through the feet and through the sticks and to the back door for Ryan Smith to finish off 2-2, a monster-sized goal for Team Canada. Canada is 2-for-2 two two on the power play, and the line mates, Heatley and Smith, have the two goals. That's Ryan Smith's second goal of the tournament, and as I said, he's ready to engage. You could see it in the warm-up, and you could see it the first shift he took. So Canada, now with 10 power play goals in the competition, pulls even with Slovakia for the most in this World Hockey Championship. Viznovsky dropping it off for Pavel Dimitra. Now Sturback sends it in deep. But five on five, Pierre. The Slovaks have been the better team so far. No question. Malpi backhands it out. Viznovsky gathers it up through the middle of the ice. And icing waved off as Jovanovsky goes back. Under three minutes to go in an entertaining first period. Malpi trying to play it in. Marian Hosa comes up with it. And right away, the Slovaks go to the attack. 
Back comes Malpe to pick it up. Pavel Dimitra comes in on the forecheck. And the Slovaks do not sit back. Here's a pass for Doan in across with Draper. Doan waits. Canada completing a change. Draper taps it in front. And now Draper back to the line. Doan plays it across. Canada has completed the change and Redden backhands it in. Dimitra to the line. Gabrick. Uh, good breed by Wade Redden. Awesome pinch. If you're going to pinch, that's when to do it. And now Maltby falls down as Boyle plays it ahead for Draper. That pass intercepted. But Nash deals it right back. Chara brought down Nash and the referee says play on. Good. Let him play. Fight through it. Nothing wrong with that. We want to see that both ways. Boyle for Redden. Under two to go now in the first period. Dan Boyle through the middle of the ice for Thornton. Looking in for Nash. In comes Rick Nash. Fires. Stopped there by Lashik. What a save by the Slovakian netminder. Oh, Sturback's really mad because that was a bad change on defense. Usually Sturback and Vishnowski play together. You see Sturback coming in late because his man, Granite, came off the ice late. You see Sturback just coming over. What a glove save, though by Lashik. That's Canada utilizing the stretch pass and slash skating. Give the Slovaks a little bit of their own medicine. Good job by Canada in the neutral zone and a nice save by Lashik. Thornton, Gagne and Nash remain on the ice and now Sturback goes back to pick up the puck but Nash gets there first. Sturback now plays it up to center ice. Wade Redden fires it in and behind the play Chatan was tied up with Rick Nash and Thomas Anderson is going to send them both off with 1.39 to go here in the first period. Two very skilled goal scorers yes. sitting in the penalty box. <laughs> one for a slash and one for a rough. Rick Nash got a glorious opportunity there. I'm sure he'll have many more before this afternoon is over, Gord. Rick Nash has scored in every game for Canada in this tournament so far. After one period of play in Vienna, 1-0 the U.S. leading the Czechs on a goal by Mike Madano. Craig McTavish wanted to get a change in here for the four on four. He wanted Regeer and Jovanovski on the ice. Canada has the last change, but Anderson, the official, never put his arm up, so McTavish wasn't allowed to make the change. So you're gonna have to be aware of that on the bench for Canada and also for Slovakia if you want to make a late change. Be ready and be quick. Now Boyle goes to the Canadian bench and turns back. And Palfi comes up with it for Slovakia. In for Martin Sturbach. Long lead pass for Paul Feet. That rolls off his stick and Boyle gets to it. Back comes Canada the other way. Joe Thornton along with Simone Gagne. Thornton steaming across the line. Dropping it out for Gagne. Canada changing. Off the bench is Jovanovski is shot off a leg and wide. Thornton looking for it. Down low for Gagne. And Gagne now spins back in the corner. For Joe Thornton behind the goal. Back in front for Gagne. Viznovski had him tied up. And now Gagne for Thornton. Thornton falls. And that allows Sturbach to come away with it. The effort level's there for Canada now, though. They know they're in a battle, and they have to be paying attention to defensive detail. Long lead beat. Here comes Draper. Draper with a rolling puck. will wait for Canada to complete the change. And now Draper takes a bump from Sturbach. Centering pass. Got away from Maltby. Vizdovsky back the other way for Slovakia. 30 seconds to go in the period. Here's Hanzus out there along with Zednik. And the play is offside at the Canadian line. Kirk Malpe had a pretty nice tournament so far for Canada with a goal and assist. Mark Capshide knows Malpe, Draper, Dome, the international grind line from two years ago in Helsinki. Gonna have to light it up here this afternoon for Canada to be successful. Draper wins the draw back and Boyle taps it there for Wade Redden. And now Redden steps around Michael Hanzus. Onto the tape of Danny Heatley who comes streaking in and Char will play that down the ice. Foot race forward as Redden has to go back. Being watched closely by Richard Zednik. And back goes Boyle in the final seconds of the period. Boyle circles back and that will do it. Slovakia twice takes the lead but Canada equalizes on power play goals both times. 2-2 the score after one. Attention Canadian hockey fans, you've seen the action on the ice, now go behind the scenes with Hockey Canada, become a Hockey Canada insider, and get the inside scoop on Hockey Canada's teams, players, and events. Exclusive interviews, special giveaways, great prizes, and access to tickets are just a few of the perks that you'll receive as a Hockey Canada insider. Four on four for the next 22 seconds, and then we'll get back to five on five play. And you have to think that the Canadians had the video board out in that first intermission diagramming the stretch pass. See this man? You can't let him get behind you. 
Anybody behind you is a threat. Wisnowski backhands it down in the Canadian zone. Brodeur gloves that, and he will hang on. Martin Brodeur was the backup for Canada the last time this tournament was played in Austria. What a silver medal as Curtis Joseph's backup in 1996. And Mr. Chatan in the box with Rick Nash, and breakaway opportunity both ways when they come out. <laughs> Wade Redden brings it ahead. Redden for Dan Boyle. That bounces off his stick. And Nash and Chatan are out of the box. Here comes Gagne across the line. Dropping it up for Thornton. That pass is broken up. And the puck sent out by Martin Sturback. That was a four on two for Cannon. Just misread by Joe Thornton, unfortunately. Now Redden again. Gains center ice and flips it in. Redden will go off. And now Sturback wraps that around the boards. Simone Gagne had his stick shatter as he tried to knock down that clearing attempt. Jovanovski now moves the puck ahead. Up for Rick Nash, looking there for Chris Draper, and that's icing against Canada, as Nash was on the wrong side of center ice. Well, it's a real tough change here in the second period, so Mark Kapchai and his coaching staff, I'm sure, stressed that to the defenseman in particular. Because of the way Slovakia utilizes a stretch pass and they like to flood the zone with three or four different skaters, you gotta be real careful. Slovakia opened with a 2-1 win over Belarus, then tied Russia 3-3, beat Austria 8-1, lost 5-1 to the Czechs, then beat Switzerland 3-1, and beat Kazakhstan. And there was some question in the Slovakian camp about who the number one netminder would be. But when the Czechs pounded Rostislav Stana, Vlasic became their man. Robin Regeer battling for that loose buck, sends it ahead, knocked out there by Shane Doan. And now Draper looking for it, played away from him by Marion Hosa. Jovanovski had Gabrick poaching dangerously and decided to hang on to the puck. This is a forward matchup Canada wants against this line. Draper oh. trying to play it in. Zdeno Chara back to pick it up. Vidareni brings it ahead. Rene Vidareni, Vancouver third round pick back in 99. Gabrick trying to tap it there for Marion Hosa. Kept in by Gabrick, but right onto the stick of Kirk Maltby. And Malpe banks it there for Doan, who steps into Vitoreni. The Sedins went just ahead of Vitoreni. Hosa takes the long lead pass, looking for Gabrick. A center, centering pass, rather, broken up by Scott Hannon. And Hannon, being harassed by Gabrick, turns it over. Hosa lost the puck to Ryan Smith. And Shane Doan, still on the ice on this long shift, comes back to pick it up. Hannon up for Ryan Smith, banks it off the boards and out. And now finally Doan gets off the ice, but Draper's still out there. Upsuit sends it in. And now Ryan Smith, as Draper streaks to the bench, plays it across. Stolen there by Hanzu. It's a backhand pass, leaves the zone. And a break there for the Canadians, as the Slovakians were catching Canada on a chain. Michael Hanzu would never make that play if Ken Hitchcock was standing on the bench. I'll show you that right now. Morrison to Ryan Smith, and Hanzu gets in the way of that. Now Zednik with a chance. Richard Zednik walking out. Zednik had that roll off his stick, and he got hammered by Brendan Morrison. Jovanovski backhands that over the glass and out of play and will face off in the Canadian zone. Canada seeking three straight gold medals at the World Hockey Championship for the first time since the early 50s. Canada won three straight in 50, 51, and 52, but it gets kind of an asterisk because the 52 World Championship was combined with the Olympic Games. Stumple. Out there along with Shatan and Palfi, the forward line for Slovakia. And all these offensive weapons for the Slovaks. That puck rolls right down to Martin Brodeur, who plays it away. Vladislav Nagy, an outstanding Slovakian player, is not here. He was injured in their last pre-tournament game. Peter Bondra, one of the greatest Slovakian players of all time, elected not to play or even attend the Slovak training camp. Joseph Stumpel. Through the middle, that was intercepted by Scott Walker. Now Walker plays it there for Brendan Morrow across the line. And Morrow backhands it in. Walker being held up by Stumple. And Sturback just sidestepped that check. Now Shatan loops back and plays it there for Wisnowski. Lubomir Wisnowski through the middle. Playing it there for Stumple. In comes Shatan. His stick was tied up with Patrick Marlowe. Stumple in behind the goal. Now Palfi back to the line. Vito Rennie with a bouncing puck, and it comes out, and Walker's all over him. Stumple got hammered there by Brendan Morrow. 
Shatan digging for it. Boyle steps up into him and Walker comes back. A rolling puck. He almost lost it to Shatan. Boyle up there for Patrick Marlowe. And Marlowe plays it up for Morrow. Morrow spinning back. Long pass there for Nash. Sneaking off the bench. Centering pass. Knocked away there by Lashik. Canada in the midst of a change as Morrow goes off. Now Nash comes up with it. But the puck left the zone. And now Nash playing defense with Robin Regeer. And they play it ahead. Thornton backhands it in. Here comes Simone Gagne looking for it. Vitoreni had it turned over. Here's Rick Nash with the drive. Lash took the same rebound. Gagne scores! Oh, Vitoreni just cheap shot at Simone Gagne from behind. This is a vicious cheap shot by Vitoreni. What a great scoring play by Gagne. Great awareness by Rick Nash to separate Chara from the puck, but this is a cheap shot on Gagne after he scores. And Gagne very slow to get up as Jim Ramsey comes to see him. And Canada leads for the first time. You see the pressure by Gagne. Now watch the turnover. Vitoreni comes in. Good read right there. Nash steps up. Separation now. Finish. Vitoreni comes in. Cross check from behind right into the boards. That's got to be penalized. That's a five minute penalty. Doesn't matter who you're cheering for. If a Canadian player did that to the Slovakian player, I'd say the same thing. This is a danger zone. You can't go into a guy after he scores a goal like that with his arms raised. Give Canada credit for battling in there, and that's a great finish by Simon Gagne. But right there, that's excessive, not acceptable, and should be penalized. That's vicious. Now, the referee, Thomas Anderson, consulted with his linesman, Leo Takala from Sweden and Stefan Fonselius from Finland. There is no penalty on the board so far. Gagne has gone to the Canadian bench. And Mark Habscheid livid on that bench that as yet there is no penalty being called. Gagne's back on the bench board, which is good news for Canada. He left for a little while here and now he's back. But that was absolutely vicious. And they are gonna call a penalty, Gord. They are gonna call a penalty to Vitorini. What's interesting the is they replayed the play on the scoreboard here. Here's the finish. So everyone saw it. Okay, got, now watch this right here. His arms are up. There's no reason for Vitorini to hit him. And then he just pile drives him into the wall. Completely unacceptable. Gagne playing in the World Championship for the first time. So Vitorini does go off. Now, as of yet, they have not posted whether it's a two or a five. That should be a five in a game. There's no need for that in the sport. Send a message so that players watching back home, whether it be in Slovakia or Canada, young players should know that can never be accepted in our sport. Now, there are five Slovaks on the ice. They're gonna call misconduct then. 10 minutes checking from behind, it's a misconduct. So no power play for Canada. And Vitoreni will spend 10 minutes in the box. Gagne, by the way, scores his second goal of the World Championship to give Canada the lead. Heatley digging for it at the line, kept in by Scott Hannon. Four and a half gone here in the second period. Canada with its first even strength goal of the game leads 3-2. Lubos Bartechko being watched there by Brendan Morrison. Canada, and the Canadian the coach, one, two, two right now. Canadian coach Mark Habscheid still talking to the referee about why no penalty okay. was called against Slovakia. He's got to let it go now. Now he's got to concentrate on his matchups and pay attention to the game plan. I know what he's feeling right now, but you got to let it go. Scott Hannon brings it ahead. Up for Danny Heatley. That pass rolls away from Brendan Morrison. 1 2 2 by Canada, really protecting the stretch pass. Now Heatley makes his way off the ice. Quick change by the Canadians. Lubomir Viznoski through the middle of the ice, kicked ahead there. And that pass was too far for Richard Zednik. Hannon's all over Zednik. Bartechko reaching for the loose puck, comes up with it. Draper's all over him. Bartechko spinning in behind the Canadian goal. Still with it, Bartechko. Now tries to bank it in front, and Draper comes away with a puck. A bit of a rugby scrum down to the left of Martin Brodeur. Viznovsky keeps it in. That drive blocked by Ryan Smith, and the puck squirted out. Doan was going back the other way. And now Draper brings it ahead. Draper fires it in deep. Doan looks at the bench, but decides to stay on the ice. Stumple chips that away from Chris Draper. Sturback for Shatan. And Paul had snuck in behind the Canadian defense. But Redden and Boyle were communicating. That's the important thing. If you're a fan of Canada right now, the defense was communicating a lot better. Centering pass stolen away by Redden. And we're going to have a penalty coming up. Offsetting Miners coming up. We're back after this. 
Series of the World will be on Halifax and Quebec City this May for the 2008 IIHF World Hockey Championship. Be a part of history as Canada hosts the IIHF World Hockey Championship for the first time ever. The top 16 hockey nations on the planet will be going head-to-head -head from May 2nd to May 18th. Don't miss a second of this world-class hockey event. Get your tickets now for... Everybody's raving about Zidane Achara and how well he played over here, especially in Sweden this year with Fyrestad. Big ice hockey is not his thing. Ed Jovanasi getting treated there by Jim Ramsey, the trainer for the New York Rangers. Spent 10 years with the Rangers, five with Winnipeg Jets before that. But chara has got a huge issue on big ice, a lot like yeah. Sheldon Surrey. Big ice is not his thing. He has a real tough time playing on big ice. Char, though, was outstanding for Fyrestad in the Swedish League as they advanced to the final of the Swedish Elite League playoffs, losing to Frölunda. He was good until the final. Then we saw him play. We must have been the Hex because he wasn't good in those games. Circling back, Dan Boyle leaving it there for Wade Redden. Zygmunt Palfi stepping into Redden. And Danny Heatley plays it rink wide for the speedy Dan Boyle. Here comes Boyle across the line. Dan Boyle working his way in around Radoslav Suchi. And Boyle still after it. He's got about 250 feet. Now fires it wide of the goal. Morrison playing it down for Malpe. Back to five on five as Malpe tries to center. Battling down there with Stumple. Centering pass on the stick of Boyle. Rebound in front. Boyle gets to it. Still loose and finally tapped away by Suchi. What a save by Lashik. Outstanding reaction save by Lashik. Heatley battling for it. And the puck cleared away by Suchi. And all the way down the ice is Redden has to hustle back. And icing is the call against the Slovaks. Danny Boyle with a nice feed out. Or sorry, Danny Heatley out to Danny Boyle. And Boyle with a quick release on goal. And Lashik makes the read and gets over. Good scramble down low. Brendan Morrison whacking away. Malpe whacking away. Boyle whacking away. But Heatley out to Boyle. Great quality chance for Canada. Czechs are out shooting the U.S. 22 to 12 in that game in Vienna and losing 2 0. Back to Robin Regeer. Here's Patrick Marlowe looking for it. Back in front, Scott Walker centered it. Gabrick got in the way of that, and away come the Slovaks. Gabrick. That pass for Dimitra was knocked down by Brendan Morrow. Long shoot in, and Brodeur waits. Gabrick all over him, and now Brodeur just tosses it down in the corner for Morrow. Brodeur somewhat intimidated by the low slot side glass yeah. here. Does not play the puck as much as he would in the NHL. Morrow trying to center it. That pass broken up by Marion Hosa. And away they come again. Hosa. Sends it rink wide for Demetra, and now Regeer sends it ahead for Morrow in a foot race with Sturback. Here's Morrow, centers it, Walker in, back hit shot. Oh, it's off the post and wide. Great chance for Scott Walker with a wide open net. And now Scott Hannon chips it in, and Walker shaking his head on the Canadian bench. Sturback hammered down by Nash. And that was close. Now Nash back in front, Hannon. Has Lashik down and rolls wide. And a penalty coming up. Marion Host is going to go off. And Canada, with two power play goals already in the game, will go back with a man advantage. I'm going to go back to game one when Brian Burke sat in the studio and said, Canada's got to get their defense more engaged in the cycle of the rush. Scott Hannon gets engaged in the cycle. Hosa loses body position. Forced the haul Hannon down. Leads to a penalty. Now Canada has two power play goals already in this game. Can get a third. Lashik makes another big save for Slovakia. Marion Holson knows, especially for playing with Jacques Martin for so many years, you've got to have defensive awareness if you're a forward playing for any team in any level of hockey, and Holson lost his man right there in Hannon. Thornton wins the draw on the Canadian power play. Jovanovski and Boyle back on the points. Thornton, along with Nash and Gagne, up front. And the puck squirts by Dan Boyle. And hustling back is Jovanovski with Hanzus watching him. Canada two for two on the power play in this hockey game. Now that pass in the feet of Thornton. Hanzus gets to it looking for Richard Zednik. And back goes Jovanovski. Good to see Gagne back on the ice court. And Jovanovski. And now Jovanovski has it taken away by Hanzus again who backhands it right back to Jovanovski. Ahead for Boyle. That bounced away from him. Now he plays it in deep. Sushi goes back to pick it up. And fires that up the center ice as Canada is changing. Morrison and Redden will now work the point on the power play. Smith comes on along with Nash. Thornton remains on the ice for now. And now Thornton gives way to Patrick Marlowe. The play is offside. 
at the Slovakian line. Canada still has a minute and four seconds on the power play, so all you have to do is do it right once. Jan Lasik's made three spectacular oh. saves to keep this thing close. Here's one of them right here. Very bad luck for Scott Walker. Oh. He actually didn't have to stop that one. I thought a stick got it. Right there, nope, doesn't hit the stick, just goes wide. Slovaks win the draw, and now fired ahead Miroslav Shatan in with Joseph Stumpel. And a bouncing puck goes down to Heatley in the corner. Heatley for Ryan Smith. He's got one of the Canadian power play goals, taps it back for Wade Redden, past the midway point of the second period. Canada with a 3 2 lead. Marlowe in behind the goal, Stumpel loses it there to Heatley. Morrison battling for the loose puck, and it's kicked out by Viznovsky. Back in comes Marlowe. Patrick Marlowe walking in, fires that over the net. Here's Morrison back with it. 30 seconds to go on the Canadian power play. Ryan Smith down low. Smith taken out by Sturback, but still has the puck. Plays it down for Heatley and for Marlowe. He fired it over the net. Now Heatley bangs away at it. Ryan Smith plays it back for Brendan Morrison. Morrison a drive, and Lasha gets a glove on that and hangs on. Hannah's starting to take this game over because they're stronger on the boards than Slovakia. Slovakia's probably a little bit better in open ice, but on the boards where Ryan Smith and guys like Danny Heatley can make things happen, point shots are going to open up, and Brendan Morrison gets a quick point shot through the screen of Danny Heatley, and Lasik has the active glove, shuts it down. His glove has been very effective for him here this afternoon. I mentioned that Lasik, the first Slovakian net minor to play in the NHL, wasn't the first to win a game. He still hasn't won one. Yeah, Stana is backup. His backup, Rostislav Stana, was the first net miner to win a game in the NHL. Beat Detroit 4-1 at the Joe Louis Arena. Stopped 40 shots. He's only played six games in the NHL, and that was his most important one. <laughs> Phillips up for Heatley. Heatley in front. Just missed Ryan Smith. The teams are back to five on five. Hosa ahead with Hanzus and Richard Zednik. Here's Hosa trying to tap it there for Zednik. Hosa gathers it back up. Down behind the goal for Hanzu. Spins away from Phillips. Michael Hanzu walks in front of back. Headshot stopped by Brodeur. And Brodeur clears away the rebound. Back comes Hosa with it. Hosa looking there for Zednik. Morrison steps into him. And Morrison got the hook on Zednik. And he's going to go off Slovakia to the power play when we come back. Classic. Another look at Simone Gagne scoring that goal and getting hacked down by Rene Viderny from Slovakia. That earned Viderny a 10 minute misconduct. Off the faceoff. Viznovsky for Sturback on the Slovakian power play. Sturback trying to center it, gloved down by Jovanovsky and fired down the ice. Slovaks, as we mentioned, now tied with Canada for the most power play goals in the tournament. Both teams have 10. Most importantly for the Canadians, they have two today. It's offside. Kuznowski kicks it ahead, delayed offside indicated. By the way, in case you're wondering, Vyacheslav Bulanov, the referee who was involved in the Rick Nash incident, did not get a quarterfinal assignment in this tournament. And another penalty coming up to Canada. Draper. Stumpel trying to center it, knocked down by Brendan Morrow. And Canada is going to be two men short for a minute and 21 seconds as Draper goes off for elbowing. This is a double whammy for Canada. First of all, it's a five on three. You don't want to see that against a skilled team like Slovakia. And number two, Draper and Malpe, that effective penalty killing tandem. Here's Draper on Sturback. Just a little kiss to the noggin. That's not good discipline from Chris Draper. He knows this is international hockey. He's been through it before. You just got to let it go right there. I know he's trying to fight through the holdup. You can't do that. Any contact to the head will be called. Wisnowski back at the line, plays it down for Hosa. Out there with Gabaric and Dimitra. Hosa gathers it back up. Here's Wisnowski in for Sturback. Sturback winds and fires off a leg. It bounces down, and Jovanovski fires it down the ice. One minute to go in the first penalty to Canada's Brendan Morrison. Gagne is out with Hannon and Jovanovski for Canada. Wisnowski rink wide for Pavel Dimitra. Brodeur knocks it down. Jovanovski spins, plays it right in front of the goal. And now here's Hosa with it for Dimitra. Wisnowski goes back to the line. Viznovsky walking in, plays it down for Hosa. Hosa, back for Viznovsky. In for Sturback, back to Viznovsky. Here's a drive by Hosa wide of the goal, and Sturback has to retreat to pick it up at the line. 30 seconds to go in Morrison's penalty. Sturback, Viznovsky walks in, taps it down. Here's Hosa, Brodeur down, can't get a shot away, and now Gabarik with it. 
Gabrick back for Viznovsky. Viznovsky for Sturback. Waits, plays it down low. Dimitra centering pass for Hosa, knocked away, but kept in neatly by Viznovsky. Ten seconds ago in Morrison's penalty. Viznovsky. Back to Sturback. In front, Dimitra scores! Uh, there's only so long you're going to be able to hold that skill off the board in a five-on-three situation. Three seconds were left in the Morrison penalty. 43 seconds were left in the Draper penalty. Sturback does a nice job getting this down to Demetra, and Demetra's an excellent scorer, as everybody that watches the NHL knows. He's a guy that had 37 goals in 98-99, so he's no stranger to putting pucks to the back of the net. Good movement. Jovanovski goes down, and Demetra just chips it by Marty Berdur. There's not a whole lot anybody can do on that play. Jovanovski's trying to be big. Good patience by Sturback, and then Dimitri just finishes it off. And because there were three seconds left in the Morrison penalty, Slovakia will remain on the power play for 43 seconds. Pavel Dimitra, three times a 30-goal scorer in the NHL in seven years of the St. Louis Blues. Five fifty-two to play here in the second period. This game is tied at three. And a terrific quarterfinal match between Canada and Slovakia. As we mentioned, all six games between Canada and Slovakia in the history of this tournament have been decided by a goal or less. Slovaks remain on the power play as Redden goes down. Now Redden looking for it. Centering pass, Viznowski fires that down off a leg and wide. Digging for it is Shane Doan who fires that down the ice. Lashik trying to leave it there for Viznowski. Scott Walker chases him in behind the goal. And Viznowski knocked off stride, plays it ahead for Shatan. Shatan hammered there by Walker. Regeer comes up with it. And the penalty's over to Chris Draper. Draper out of the box. Puck loose in front. Redden plays that ahead for Walker, and he taps it up to center ice. What a play by Viznowski to knock that out of the air to keep it in the zone. Canada changing as Thornton comes back on the ice. Long lead pass for Palpy. It alone is Palpy. Hooked down by Regeer. And it's going to be a penalty shot for Slovakia. And there's another example of why the two line pass is so effective. We're back for a penalty shot when we come back. Here on ESPN Classic. Slovakia's leading scorer, Zygmunt Palfi, five goals in six games, awarded a penalty shot. Martin Brodeur, in his career, has been excellent on penalty shots in the National Hockey League. 3-3 three, three game, 4.52 to go in the second period, and here comes Palfi. Zygmunt Palfi in. Stop by Brodeur. What a stop by Brodeur. Palfi can't believe it. He has Brodeur hung out to dry. All he has to do is get it up and over. But Brodeur, because of his big size and his flexibility and athleticism, gets the glove over and rips it right out of the air. That is an unbelievable athletic play by Marty Brodeur. Look at this court. The club comes all the way over and shuts it down on Palfi. Spectacular goaltending performance in that situation by Brodeur. Look at the extra effort. No quit in his play at all. And Palfi can't get it to the back of the net. Martin Brodeur with a spectacular save to keep the game tied at three. Wow, this game has really had everything. It really has. Off the faceoff, Chara drive off a leg and wide, and now Brodeur plays that away. Barteczko in the corner for it. And Richard Zednik was shaken up. And referee Thomas Anderson has blown play dead, but he doesn't seem to be calling a penalty. Zygmunt Palfi on the bench, still using a wood stick, board, and he's a guy that knows how to find the back of the net, as everybody knows. Oof. And now we've got a little tribunal going on. The two linesmen and the referee. And Ryan Smith comes over to see what's going on. They're going to see if anyone saw Zednik get clipped with a high stick. Tell Shatan, uh-uh. So the face-off should remain in the Slovaks or the Canadian zone rather. Face off win by Hanzus. Oh, you know what? Danny Heatley's stick got him right in the mush. Danny Heatley was going out to block that shot and the stick got him right in the mouth. Good thing he has a mouthpiece in. Nose has a little blood. And we're going to have a delay 
as they're going to come out and clean that up. Yeah. By the way, in Vienna, still two nothing in favor of the Czechs. The shots are in favor of the Americans rather. 31 to 15 are the shots on goal for the Czech Republic. Rick DiPietro under siege in that game. There are 20 seconds remaining in the second period of that game. What a story that would be. The Americans beat the Czechs last year <laughs> in Prague. Yeah. U.S. won a bronze medal a year ago, beat Slovakia in the bronze medal game in a shootout. Andy Roach. So we'll get some attention to the ice, but there does not appear to be a penalty call against Canada. Well, that'll do wonders for the ice. Well, hope there's a shovel. <laughs> the ice in Vienna, by the way, has been a story in this tournament. Very warm weather. It's an older building. And the ice actually along the boards was separating, exposing the concrete underneath. They seem to have that under control now. And the period is now over in Vienna. 2 0 the U.S. ahead on goals by Mike Madano and Mark Parrish. Keely Stick getting up on Zednik. That's why we have the blood on the ice. Danny Heatley, the MVP of this tournament a year ago. And of course, a big goal for Canada earlier in this game. You saw Franisek Hosa on the Slovak bench. He coached the Slovaks to a fourth place finish last year. They lost a heartbreaker to Canada in the semifinal. The Slovaks felt, and you heard James Duffy mention it earlier, that Rob Niedermeyer interfered with Jan Lasik, but the goal by Sean Horkoff stood. Canada won that game 2 to 1. Horkoff's goal scored less than five minutes left. Here's the windmill action of Marty Berder. Here in Austria, not Holland, but that's a pretty good imitation of a windmill right there. Wow. And they're making more of a mess of the ice trying to clean it up than they were. That's why they should have a shovel. There, he's got the shovel now. Get going. Get off. 4.46 remaining here in the second period. Canada and Slovakia tied at three. The Slovaks have led twice. Canada has led once. By the way, yesterday in relegation action, Slovenia a winner. So Germany's out. Austria's out. Denmark and Slovenia survive. And next year, Norway and Italy will join the main group. Just another chance to watch Anzi Kopitar. Yes. Slovenia, the great Slovenian player. Here's the goal by Pavel Dimitri that nodded it all at three. Slick feed from Sturback. Getting Ed Jovanovski to go down, commit. Pavel Dimitri's not going to miss very often from there, especially in a five on three situation. There's a great story on how Pavel Dimitri was drafted. In 1993, he went 227th in the draft. The reason why, that year he broke his ankle playing tennis. And so all the scouts forgot about him. And John Ferguson Sr. was working for the Ottawa Senators at the time and says, hey, I know this kid from Slovakia that's tremendous. And they ended up getting Pavel Dimitra. And one of the worst trades in NHL history was a player that didn't play in the league. Krista Olsen traded for Pavel Dimitra. Pierre Gauthier was a general manager of Ottawa at the time. Mike Keenan and Bob Berry were running the St. Louis Blues at the time. And they made that deal. And that's been a home run deal for St. Louis and an awful deal for the Ottawa Senators. So they finally cleaned up the ice. Remind me not to have these guys come and clean my carpets. <laughs> <laughs> 4.46 remaining here in the second. Now Hapchide's arguing the Slovaks are making a late change, and they got away with it. And Ryan Smith takes a whack at that puck. Chris Phillips plays it across for Scott Hannon. And his old junior team, the Kelowna Rockets, up three games to one on Brandon in the Western Hockey League playoffs. Now Heatley digging for it. Trying to tap it back for Hannon. Anzus gets a stick on that. Heatley still battling for it. Smith gets tangled up with the referee. And that allows him to play it out. Scott Hannon gloved that down with Richard Zednik streaking in right behind him. Now Phillips goes to fire it in. That's over the glass and out of play. Michael Hansus, we were talking about him playing almost 19 minutes a game for Ken Hitchcock, plus 18 last year. Michael Hansus, and you got to give Bob Clark a lot of credit. When they got him from the Phoenix Coyotes in that Robert S. Brian Boucher deal, Gord, it was Ken Hitchcock that went to Bob Clark and said, I'm telling you right now, I coached a lot of games against Phoenix and St. Louis when I was in Dallas. This guy is a big time shutdown guy. He's an Eastern Conference player, and Ken Hitchcock was a very influential person on that deal. 
Regeer with a shot, got knocked down. Radoslav Suchi plays it up along the boards, and here's Marion Gabryk through the middle for Pavel Dimitra, looking for Marion Hosa. And now Regeer goes back with Hosa, and Hosa steps into him. Gabryk is centering a pass, knocked away by Jovanovski. Hosa digging for it. Here's Rick Nash. And Nash moves it ahead slowly for Canada. Nash gains center ice, walking across the line is Nash, still coming in, taken away by Gabryk, who's away with Hosa. Gabryk streaking it across the line on Jovanovski. Gabryk, a centering pass for Hosa. He was tied up. And now played ahead by Thornton for Rick Nash barreling in. He's brought down by Sturbeck. Penalty coming up. Gagne centers it there. Kept in at the line. Here comes Dan Boyle. Boyle fires it on. Lashik the save. Kept alive by Gagne. And finally, Hosa touches the puck. And Canada will go to the power play with 3.29 remaining here in the second period. This is just a great decision by Joe Thornton to move this puck to a streaking and slash skating Rick Nash. And this again is why this two line pass is so important. Rick Nash just goes right through the defense pairing of Strayback and Vishnovsky and they have to corral him with their stick. The speed effect, the slash skate effect and the puck movement effect when you stretch the zone is lethal. And when you have skilled players that are top of the world in terms of making plays court, it makes a difference. Canada two for three on the power play. Morrison plays it there for Redden. Redden Morrison at Heatley Fall. So Redden fires it. That puck chipped by Ryan Smith over the glass and out of play. And they're going to rule it went off Suchi's stick, and the faceoff will remain in the Slovak zone. And that's the second time Suchi's done that. I don't know who's been teaching him to block shots with a stick he did in the first period, too. And that's a good call by the linesman and the official. Marlowe, Smith, and Heatley up front. Off the face, off a scrambled draw, goes back to Dino Chera. He'll wrap that off the glass. Wade Redden knocks it down, but can't keep it in. And right now Morrison circles back. Long lead pass for Ryan Smith, trying to chip it down there. And played ahead by Radoslav Suchi. Marlowe battles. Heatley tries to chip that puck in, bounces off the back of Joseph Stumpel, whose stick was all tied up by Marlowe. And he plays it back to Suchi. Martin Berner goes back. Slovaks change penalty killers as Wade Redden brings it ahead. Here comes Redden. Looking ahead for Heatley. Viznovsky got a stick on that. Morrison plays it ahead for Heatley, but it's offside at the Slovak line. Lubomir Viznovsky played in the World Junior Championship the World Championship and the World Cup of Hockey in one year in 1996 he was 19 years old never let anybody tell you undersized defenseman can't play he's a great passer and an awesome awesome reader of the rush 510 183 pounds he gets it very important player for the Los Angeles Kings when he's healthy his fourth year with LA when he's healthy is the critical point yeah. but he's not alone in LA in that department under a minute to go on the penalty to Martin Sturback and Zdeno Chera remains out there for the Slovaks. Dan Boyle shovels it in. Looking for Joe Thornton. Thornton in the corner with it. Taps it there for Rick Nash. Gagne's alone behind the net. Here's Thornton. Plays it down for Nash. Gagne back to Thornton. Thornton walks out in front. Down for Gagne. Tapping it in front and that was chipped away by Chara who was battling there with Nash. Jovanovski with it. 30 seconds to go on the power play. Here's Boyle. Back for Jovanovski. Across to Gagne. In for Jovanovski. Up for Boyle. Boyle waits, plays it down for Nash. 20 seconds to go on the power play. Nash spinning back. Down for Thornton. A centering pass. It bounced away from Gagne. Here's Gagne with it. Down for Thornton. Thornton back behind the goal looking for Gagne. Bouncing puck in front. Now Nash in a foot race for it. Gets to it for Thornton. Thornton plays it across off the skate of Boyle. Penalized players back on the ice. Sturback. And now Thornton comes up with it. Here's Gagne. Side of the goal. Gagne to stick. Knocked away from him. Zednik. For the bouncing puck in front. Gagne can't get to it. Kept in by Jovanovski. Fires. That shot blocked in front. Hanzus can't get it out. Great pressure by the Canadians. Jovanovski for Gagne. That bounced away from him. Thornton with it. Thornton trying to center it. He's brought down. Penalty. Coming up to Slovakia. That'll be Richard Zednik going off. Extra attackers on the ice. It's Danny Heatley. Canada had too many on the ice. Boyle plays it in for Heatley. Fires. That's off a leg. Chera got in the way of that. Boyle still with it. Plays it back for Scott Hannon. Centering pass. Fired there. Rebound. Thornton. Loose puck at the side of the goal. They jam away at it. Gagne can't get it away. Finally, Slovakia touches it. And with 39 seconds to go in the second period, 
And after a long siege in the Slovak zone, Canada will go to the power play. Joe Thornton just dominant, gets a high stick right in the face. That's Richard Zednik. He's still mad at Danny Heaton for hitting him with a high stick, so he hits Joe Thornton. But you need a resuscitator for all those players that were on the ice, including that guy, Zdeno well, Chara. And they're sending Chara off. Yeah, it was Zednik that was a penalized player. They're calling That's a Chara. bad break for the sure, Slovaks. Darn right it is. That's one of the best defensemen in the tournament, the guy they lean on hard. Suchi comes up with it off the faceoff and fires it by Wade Redden. Now Redden picks his way through the middle of the ice. Gains center ice and fires it in off Suchi. Obsu goes back. Ryan Smith gets there first, plays it to an open corner. Miroslav Shatan comes up with it and banks it back down to the Canadian zone. Ten seconds left in the period. Canada will have a minute and 22 seconds of power play time to start the third of his penalty carries over. Heatley coming in across the line. They couldn't get him the puck. And now Shatan away with it. And that's going to do it for the second period. And a wild second it was, including a stop penalty shot. And lots of lead changes. 3-3 three, three the score, heading for the third. Attention Canadian hockey fans. You've seen the action on the ice. Now go behind the scenes with Hockey Canada. Become a Hockey Canada insider and get the inside scoop on Hockey Canada's teams, players, and events. Exclusive interviews, special giveaways, great prizes, and access to tickets are just a few of the perks that you'll receive as a Hockey Canada insider. Become a Hockey Canada insider. Off the faceoff, Wade Redden circling back, being watched by Joseph Stumpel. Hard to remember the last time Joseph Stumpel killed penalties in the National Hockey League on a regular basis. Now Redden moves it ahead, dropping it off for Rick Nash, trying to center it. Miroslav Shatan got to that and played it out. One minute to go in this Canadian power play. And Boyle circling ahead. Here comes Boyle across center ice. Boyle into the offensive zone, played away from him, and backhanded out once more by Miroslav Shatan. One year ago, Canada... In the semifinal, beat Slovakia 2-1 to one on a controversial goal by Sean Horkoff. Less than five minutes remaining in the game, the Slovaks felt that Rob Niedermeyer had interfered with goaltender Jan Lasik. Now Nash looking for it in the corner. 30 seconds left in this Canadian power play. Gagne taps it there to Thornton. He's got time. Thornton back for Jovanovski. That shot through traffic just wide off a leg. Anzu's racing to it. Boyle got there first. Here's Rick Nash. Playing it there for Thornton. Jovanovski in front, and Richard Zednik got a stick on that. Now Jovanovski, another drive. Lashik knocked that away from Gagne. Here's Nash with it. Nash back for Thornton. Final seconds of the power play. Walking in is Nash. Nash around the goal. The backhand shot. Lashik gets the blocker down. Score. That was it. And they're going to say no goal. That the goaltender Lashik had his glove on it. Nash argues, and you would hope not too vociferously, but the faceoff will be in the Slovak zone, and the penalty is over. Well, hopefully we're going to get a good look at this one, and hopefully we can time the whistle up. One whack at it, and yep. then the puck's exposed, and it's across the line. The they're saying he had a blocker yeah, they're over. they're going to say he had his blocker over it, and the referee was screened out, and that's well within his right to make the call. Nash in the wraparound. Nobody can rotate over to him. Suchi and Visnovsky are on the same side of the ice. And the puck's clearly in the net, but the, offic the official, excuse me, said he blew the call or blew the whistle. <laughs> uh, and he may have blown the call, too. Draper, Malpe, and Doan come on for Canada out there against Dimitra, Hosa, and Gabara. Off the face off, controlled by Pavel Dimitra to Zdeno Chera, who's out of the penalty box. Marion Gabarik hacks that out to center ice. Jovanovski for Draper chips it in, and that's offside. Who's the greatest Slovakian player of all time? Some would argue Peter Stasny. See another play at the, another look at the Nash, no goal. Stasny actually played for three different countries internationally, Czechoslovakia, then played for Canada in the 84 Canada Cup, and then when Slovakia gained its independence, he played for the Slovaks in the 94 Winter Olympics. I think he's the best Slovakian player ever. Peter Bondra and the great goaltender Vladimir Zarilla. Would be the other top three. Here's Doan in front. Doan brought down a penalty coming up. And Lubos Bartechko is going to go off as Canada will go right back to the power play. A minute and 54 seconds 
into this third period. Of course, Shane Doan was worried about his stick handing abilities earlier on in this tournament. Not in this scenario. It's actually Dominic Granick, 83, yeah. who goes off the 21 year old. Shane Doan does a tap dance on Granick right there. Get in the front of the goal. Granick forced to haul him down. Back to the power play. Marlowe, Heatley, Smith up front. Morrison and Redden back on the points. And off the face off, the puck controlled by the Slovaks. And Viznovsky will send it up to center ice. Hanzus has done a tremendous job in face-off situations for Slovakia this afternoon. Redden wires it in, lashing out to play it. Not really his thing. Redden steps up on Hanzus and keeps the puck alive. Smith back to the line for Patrick Marlowe. And a great diving play by Hanzus to knock it out. He's played tremendous this afternoon. Really well. Morrison fires it in wide of the goal. Patrick Marlowe goes looking for it. Gets by him. Saved there by Danny Heatley. Heatley played it down low, but right on the stick of Martin Sturback, and he fires it down. Now Brodeur. Long lead pass for Smith as the Slovaks are changing. Smith sends a rink wide for Heatley. A drive. Flashing to save. Loose puck in front. And Chara steered that away. Jovanovski pinches up. Here's Ryan Smith with it. For Jovanovski. Passes in front, bouncing down. Jovanovski still with it. Retreats back to the blue line. Jovanovski in the corner for Ryan Smith. In for Marlowe. Stumple got a stick on that. Stumple waits and fires it down the ice. Brodeur being watched by Chatan. 50 seconds to go in this Canadian power play in a 3-3 game. Canada is 2-for-5 on the power play. Scored in its first two chances. Jovanovski sends it in. Thornton leaves it there for Dan Boyle. Whips it across for Jovanovski. Jovanovski is shot, goes off the arm of Miroslav Shatan. And now Chara's away with Shatan. Chara drive, knocked down by Brodeur. Boyle waiting for Canada to complete the change. Here comes Thornton steaming across the line with Gagne and Nash. Thornton sets it up in front for Nash. Nash fires. Lasha gets an arm on that. Now Thornton taps it back to the it. line. Here comes Hosa away with Dimitra. Hosa two on one for Dimitra. Fire scores. Short handed goal for the Slovaks. Dan Boyle gets caught in deep. Joe Thornton thinks he's back in the point, but he's not. That leads to a three on one for Slovakia. Pavel Dimitra with a lightning quick release just fools and handcuffs Marty Berdur on this one. See, nobody there. That's Dan Boyle's point. Off to the streak they go. Dimitra from Hosa. Just handcuffing Berdur. It's all about the release. Hosa identifies, he's not going to score from there on Berdur, and he knows that Dimitra being a left-hand shot on a strong side can just snap that one right by Berdur. It handcuffs him. Nonetheless, Joe Thornton with a wayward pass because he thinks Dan Boyle's playing on the right point, but he pinched in to try to create a chance down low. Pavel Dimitra had not scored a goal coming into this game. He's got two huge ones, one and a five on three, now that one four on five. And that's the first short-handed goal in the tournament that Canada's given up. And now the power play will wind down as Regeer comes across the line. And Granik's back on the ice for the Slovaks. Zdeno Chara stumbles in behind the Canadian defense. That's gloved down by Scott Hannon. And they're going to call him for closing his hand on the puck. Back to Innsbruck after this. The eyes of the world will be on Halifax and Quebec City this May for the 2008 IIHF World Hockey Championship. Be a part of history as Canada hosts the IIHF World Hockey Championship for the first time ever. The top 16 hockey nations on the planet will be going head-to-head -head from May 2nd to May 18th. Don't miss a second of this world-class hockey event. Get your tickets now for Halifax.